And now, Dick Tracy. This is Dick Tracy on the case of the no-account swindle. Stand by for action. Let's go, men. Yes, it's Dick Tracy, protector of law and order. Before we listen to today's Dick Tracy adventure, let's go over a few fielding practices for would-be ball players. In the infield, one of the most important rules is keep your eye on the ball. If a grounder comes whizzing toward you, don't let it get out of your sight for a moment. Watch the ball until it's safe in your glove. A bad bounce at the last minute may cause the ball to fly over your head to one side, or even worse, hit you in the face. Something that can be avoided if you watch the ball. If you're playing the outfield on a sunny day, shield the sun from your eyes with your glove or wear shatterproof sunglasses. It's embarrassing and painful when you lose the ball in the sun and it hits you on top of your head. Here's another good rule on pop flies. Call out for them so another infielder, also trying for the ball, won't run into you. If another infielder calls for the ball, stay out of his way. And if an outfielder signals for a fly ball, be sure to always let him have it. And if necessary, drop to the ground to get out of the way. You know, gang, these fielding rules do pay off. And I'd like to remind you once more that they help you cut down on errors, cut down on injuries, and by all means, help you in winning ball games. And now, Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy and Pat Patton have been called in to investigate a racket which is crippling the local department stores. We know that this racket is headed by Slip Sales, who once managed a large department store, but it was later sent to prison for embezzling. The racket itself is founded on charging goods to other people, for which purpose Slip employs a number of girls, some to do the work in the stores and others to go to parties and steal identification papers for use in connection with the racket. Yesterday, one of these girls, an ex-shoplifter known as Winnie the Weasel, decided to hold on Slip and was killed for her troubles. Tracy was near the scene of the killing and was interested in the fact that the girl had papers in her handbag identifying her as five different people. We now find Patton arriving at the scene of the fatal accident in response to a call from Tracy. All right, all right, open up there. Let me go. Open up there. What? Oh, you finally got here, Patton. Mm-hmm. Right about giving you up. Seven minutes and 18 seconds, and you say, finally. <laughs> well, what's so exciting? This young lady? Oh, of course, huh? Come on. Well, I've seen lots of them. This one's different on two counts. First, in her purse, she has papers identifying her as five different women. And second, with her last breath, she accused somebody of pushing her in front of the cab. Yeah, that's different. What does the cabbie have to say about it? I haven't spoken to him yet. He was making a statement to Mulligan. Yeah, he seems to be finished now. Uh, let's see what he's got to say, huh? Check. I'm Inspector Tracy. I'd like to ask you a few routine questions. Yes, sir. Say, wait a minute. I know you. That's right. My name is Rex Fender. Of course I met you on another case just a few months back. Oh, this is the first time I ever ran in with Don, Mr. Tracy. I feel awful. I'm sure you must, but according to the witnesses, you couldn't have missed hitting her. What I want to find out is, do you remember if she was with anybody at the time of the accident? Well, uh, now that you mention it, she was. She was walking with a man. Uh-huh. You remember what he looked like? Oh, uh, uh, not too well. I, I noticed him looking around quickly, and I thought maybe he wanted a cab, so I pulled him close to the cab, and... All of a sudden, this dame just pitched right in front of the cab. Before she died, she said he pushed her. Did he? Well, I couldn't say. It all happened so quick. I jumped out of my cab to see if there was anything I could do for her, and when I remembered about the guy she was with, he was gone. You don't think you could identify him, then? Well, uh, all I can remember was that he uh, was about medium height with uh, a gray suit and a, a green hat, uh, a gray hat that had the brim pulled down on one side and uh, up on the other. Well, that's not much to go on, but it's something. That plus the fact that she called him Tripper. Come on, Pat. Let's get back to headquarters. Right. Let us through here. Well, Pat, that seems to complete the file on Winnie the Weasel. She did two stretches in the city prison. The last time was sent up to the state penitentiary for women. Hmm, and that was back in 1942. Which may be very significant, Pat. If she is a member of this charging racket, she herself probably hasn't been doing any actual shoplifting. Otherwise, as an old offender, 
She would almost undoubted, undoubtedly have run afoul of the law in the last five years. Yeah, that would account for all the operator's licenses she had in her pocket. Right. I've checked all the people whose names appeared on the licenses, and they've all been victimized within the last year. But none of them knew the late and unlamented Winnie. All right, then. We know she was a member of the ring. Now, where are we? Nowhere yet. We've got to find out who her friends were, who she's been seen with, and above all, who the elusive tripper is. Well, you think her death had anything to do with the racket? I think so. This was a well-planned killer. Not the kind that results from a lover's quarrel. Well, what's the motive? That's just another thing we don't know anything about. But it does show us that Bill's stores was right. They are a big and powerful organization, and apparently they'll stop at nothing. Yeah, and the only member of the gang we've met so far has been dead. The only thing we know about the gang is that they're smart and ruthless. What we've got to do is to turn up a live member of the gang. We can't get much information out of one in the condition of the late Winnie the Weasel. Elementary, Mr. Tracy, elementary. But how, when, and where are we going to turn up a live one? Pat, I'm going to call up Bill Stores at the Merchants Protective Association and ask him to have the stores make a check on every young woman who tries to charge anything, no matter how small the sale. But he said the stores couldn't afford to do that. They can afford to do it for a week, and I have a feeling a week is all we're going to need. Pat, this gang thinks it has nothing to fear. The fact that they did this killing right out in public indicates that they're riding pretty high. They'll strike again, and soon. Well, I hope you're right. The stores are going to be pretty puckered if they go to all that trouble and nothing. Good morning, Feather. Good morning. You're out bright and early. Well, I'm anxious to make good of my new career. A very laudable ambition. And how was the party last night? Very elegant and very dull. Did everything go according to schedule? Almost. Why almost? Banks Daly came into the room as I was going through his wife's test. Did he suspect anything? Well, Banks would never think I could do anything wrong. I just hope he doesn't mention it to his wife. <laughs> I think it's hardly likely. You really have nothing to fear from her. I think I told you I have a slight trump card to hold over her. Oh, you mean the fact that she wouldn't want it known that you were once married to her? That's right. But I wouldn't want Banks Daly to find out anything if he were to think, say, that he was being played for a fool, he might become dangerous. Oh, don't worry about Banks. I can handle him. I hope so. Now, what'd you get for identification? Oh, first, several personal letters. Mm -hmm. Second, a receipted bill for a safe deposit box. Good. And third, and best of all, Sammy was thoughtful enough to be on the board of directors of the Young Ladies Uplift League. Mm -hmm. Look, here's a membership card entitling it to a ten... And containing quite a complete description. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And that description fits you almost as well as it does Sonny. What do you mean, me? I thought you never had the same girls do the charging who picked up the identification. I don't normally, but the only other girl in the organization who could fit this description is indisposed. I don't think she'll be able to work for quite a while. I see. Well, uh, won't I be taking quite a chance? Not really. Just be sure to wear clothes that neither Sonny or Banks have ever seen you in. Mm -hmm. And do your hair in a different style. Make yourself look as though you might really belong to the young ladies' uplift league. The <laughs> character part, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it so happens that I have a dress that makes me look as though I founded the league. <laughs> I never did like it. It looks just as though it were made for Sonny. Splendid. Now, um, what stores doesn't she have an account at? Oh, quite a few. She apparently prefers to take cash. She has no account at Burns, none at Thimble, none at McGimsey. None at McGimsey, and... eh? Let's start there. Still waging your own little war, aren't you, Flip? Why not? I'm not forgetting who ruined my career by sending me to prison on that embezzling charge. <laughs> I'm not sure you aren't confusing cause with effect. But then that's really no concern of mine. And it would be just as well for you if you didn't forget that thing. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Threatening again. <laughs> It's amazing how ineffectually you play the part of a heavy. Well, everything's just a game to you, Feather. Just an exciting game with everyone playing a part. It may never have occurred to you that some people are serious. Deadly serious. Well, please don't shatter my girlish illusions. You make everything sound so monstrously dull. As you wish. But never say that I haven't made everything amply clear. Now, about the job at hand... We'll favor McGimsey's with our attention first. It's all right with me. Now, here are the types of things I want you to charge. In the first place, get only standard merchandise. 
Such as? Anything that is small and easily carried. And another thing. Don't charge items from two different departments on the same floor. Store detectives have a habit of circulating rather freely, as I believe you have already had the opportunity of Anything else? Uh, yes, one rather important detail. Don't carry anything with you that could identify you in the event that something should go wrong. Or something that could identify you. That would be most unfortunate. Most unfortunate. Well, now, don't worry your pretty little head about it. Implicating you in anything is probably the least of my very many worries. When do I go to work? Right now. Here's what you do. Get down to McGinsey's and start in on about the six. Will there be anything else, madam? Oh, I guess not. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at that cute little pencil set there. Oh, yes, yes. Here you are, madam. Three seventy-five. Oh, that's lovely. I think I'll take this too. How much does everything come to? I have to stay on a budget, you know. <laughs> Don't we all? Now let me see. Now that'll be eight uh, seventy-eight. Is that cash or a charge? I'll charge it. Yes, madam. Your name? Mrs. Banks Daly. Oh, Daly. D A L E Y. Four eight seven Rockingham Drive. Rockingham Drive. Yes, Mrs. Daly. Uh, do you have some identification? Why, I see. Let me see. Oh, yes, here's some letters, and here's a receipted bill. Well, that's oh, do you have anything with your description on it? I don't know. Oh, well, here's luck. My membership card and the young lady's uplift, please. Oh, may I see it? Well, thank you. Uh-huh. Yes, this will do nicely. Well, may I have my things as soon as possible? I'm in quite a hurry. <laughs> yes. Uh, just as soon as we make a routine check. Routine check? <laughs> it's something new. It'll just take a second. In a moment, we'll return to Dick Tracy. But first... Hold on, Dick Tracy fans. This next minute, I'd like to tell you about three other swell shows heard over most of these same ABC stations every weekday. Three shows you can still hear today if you stay tuned. Let's start with Terry and the Pirates. This is the radio serial adapted right from the famous comic strip. And you'll meet up with the very same characters. There's Terry himself and, of course, his able sidekick, Pat Ryan, who helps him track down dangerous criminals in the Orient where there's plenty of mystery and intrigue. Sky King's another exciting, action-packed serial you'll like. Sky goes after desperados who lurk near his flying crown ranch. Sometimes he takes off in his plane to all parts of the globe to capture men who are outside the law. Then, of course, we have Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy, also having his turn at the ABC mic on weekdays. Jack's the idol of millions of boys and girls like yourself, with good reason. There's never a dull moment when he's on the scene, whether it's at the circus or in the Sea Islands. So don't forget, gang, all these great shows will be coming up today over most of these same ABC stations. And now back to Dick Tracy. Oh, well, Mrs. Daly. Yes? As the manager would like to see you for a moment, it seems that you don't have an account of this at all. What effect will this have on the carefully laid plans of swift sales? Be sure to tune in tomorrow for The Adventures of Dick Tracy, written for radio by John Ray and Everett S. Crosby, produced by Charles Harrell, and heard overseas through the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Bill Crago speaking. Ted Malone goes along with the theory that Lady Luck does exist. Like his story about the New Jersey cab driver who came across a $1,000 bill someone had given him by mistake. The cabbie immediately took the bill down to police headquarters and identified the man who gave it to him. His tip, $100. Another lucky break occurred when a would-be actor found an old manuscript that Margaret Webster, the producer, had lost. Miss Webster was so delighted that she gave the young actor a job. If you go along with this theory of Ted Malone's that luck does exist... You'll enjoy hearing his other comments when he's on the air every weekday morning over most of these same ABC stations. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.